I've got this little cable here. I don't know if you can see it. Short little coax cable. And if I came to my lab and I took my ohmmeter and I was connected between the front, the signal and the return on my, on my little one foot long cable or my 30 centimeter cable, of course, what would the ohmmeter read? In the end, of course, is open over here. What would the ohmmeter read when I connect between the signal and return my, on my 30 centimeter no, long nothing. cable? It'd be, you mean zero? Very high impedance. Very high, Very right. Resistance. It'd be an open. Yeah. It'd be an open, resistance is open, right. But now I've taken that cable and I've made it uh, 450,000 kilometers long, stretching the Earth to the moon. It takes three seconds for a signal to go down to the end and then come back, right? So now, what does my ohmmeter read? Because, and, and the ohmmeter, these ohmmeters are pretty fast these days. It updates every half a second. And so when I connect my ohmmeter between the, um, the, the front of my transmission line, I can do a reading in a half a second. And every half a second thereafter, what will my ohmmeter read? This is one of those really simple concepts that really challenge our fundamental understanding intuition. So it updates every 0.5 seconds. And it takes from here to here, because this is the moon, it takes uh, one nano. No, I'm sorry. Let me see if I can do my eraser here. It takes. So it takes one second as the one-way time delay. So what's my ohmmeter going to read? So, so I got this really long cable. I'm looking on the front end. I stick my ohmmeter between the signal and the return. What's it going to read? When it was really short, it was an open, right? When it's really long, what's it going to read? Well, when I launch, when I connect the end of my ohmmeter to the end of the cable, I apply a one-volt signal. What is that one-volt signal? Initially, what is that instantaneous impedance that I see as soon as I connect that one volt signal between the signal and return? Well, I see an impedance of 50 ohms. And so initially, I'm going to get, let's see, uh, one volt into 50, I'm going to get 20 milliamps. And what is that 20 milliamps of current? What's that, that voltage wavefront? I just, I just increased the voltage here. What's that voltage signal going to do? That one volt signal is going to propagate it's going to zip down this very long transmission line there because that that is the second innovation that maps will introduce this idea that if i have a changing electric field so i've increased the voltage i've increased the electric field in that region between the signal and the return that changing electric field generates a changing magnetic field the changing magnetic field generates a change electric field and it self propagates so and it's going to read was, like sorry, 50 ohms it is I'm going to get that signal propagating down the transmission line at the speed of light in that in the vacuum of the Cox cable. It's going to propagate it at at um, uh, 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 30 uh, centimeters per nanosecond. It's going to zip down that line, and in its wake, it's going to leave. It's going to be a signal going in, a return signal, return signal, return. It's going to be the signal propagating down as conduction current. Okay, now wherever I have that change in electric field, I know field. where you are going with this. <laughs> and so, what do I see going in here? I launch a signal. Twenty milliamps comes in. Twenty milliamps comes out. My voltmeter applies a constant one volt. It reads twenty milliamps going this way. Twenty milliamps going this way. And I say, oh, the input resistance, because that's all my ohmmeter reads. The input resistance is fifty ohms. ohms. But wait a minute, it's open over here. I left it, I pulled that LED out, it's open. How, how is it possible for me to send, attach my voltmeter, my ohmmeter and measure 50 ohms when it's open at the far end? And that's because the input impedance of this transmission line changes. If I initially launch, connect my, my ohmmeter and I launch that one volt signal down that line, it takes one second one second to go down. What's it going to do when it hits the open? It's going to reflect. And now it's going to be a one volt going this way. And it's going to be a signal return, signal return, signal return. It's going to propagate in the other direction. It's going to take another second to come down. And now let's see, this current's moving this way initially. The return current is going to go the other way. These two currents are going to cancel out. And suddenly, 
as soon as the reflection gets here, and it's at 50 ohms over here in the in the source, as soon as it gets here, those two currents are going to cancel out. And if I look over time, and I look at the input impedance, input resistance versus time, I, I turn on, I'm going to get 50 ohms, 50 ohms, 50 ohms, and then one second to go down, one second to come back. So here's the one second mark. Here's the two second mark. And then it's going to be infinite after two seconds. The input impedance of that cable changes based on how long it takes for that signal to go down and back. And now let's go back to, so here it is between the Earth and the Moon. 450,000 kilometers, one second one-way time delay, two second round trip time. In those two seconds that I'm doing the measurement, my very slow digital multimeter, my very slow ohmmeter is going to measure the input resistance 50 ohms, literally with an ohmmeter, because that's how it behaves. It looks like it looks like a resistor at the front end, because I have a constant voltage applied and a constant current, and that is the very definition of a resistor. If I have an ohmmeter that's really slow, that takes a half a second to work, I have to have a transmission line that's at least one second, or I'm sorry, at least a a half a second time delay in order for me to see the resistance of the front end with my slow ohmmeter. The shorter I make that cable, the shorter time I have to measure that constant input impedance or resistance. And now I go back to Earth or lab scale dimensions. If I have only um, uh, 30 centimeters long, or if I have one meter long, one meter long, that's a th in air, in air, one meter long, that's three nanoseconds to go down, three nanoseconds to come back. In order to measure that constant input resistance, I need an ohmmeter that can do a measurement in a time short compared to three nanoseconds down, three in sh short compared to six nanoseconds. I need an ohm ohmmeter that can measure that resistance in you know one or two nanoseconds. And you can't use a handheld digital multimeter to do that. You need a really, really, really fast ohmmeter to do that. And that's kind of what a TDR does.